Welcome to CSC Guru. In this session, we will discuss about the topic Process Scheduling in Operating System. A process is nothing but program and execution. When a program is assigned to the CPU for execution, that time we will call it as a process. There are two types of process execution, single programming and multi-programming. In single programming environment, a job will be picked from the job pool and that will be assigned to the CPU for execution. Once one job is assigned to the CPU for execution, till it completes its total execution and gets terminated, no other job will be assigned to the CPU. That is, CPU will not be shared by more than one process. Only one process will execute with the CPU at a time. But in multi-programming environment, a job will be picked from the job pool as, and assigned to the CPU for execution. During execution, any interrupt occurs or any I.O. event occurs means the job will go to its waiting state. So during that time the CPU will be free. When the CPU is free, another job in the ready state will be assigned to the CPU for execution. More than one process will execute with the CPU. In single programming environment, only one job will execute with the CPU. And till its completion, no other job will be assigned to the CPU. But in multi-programming environment, any interrupt occurs means another job will be assigned to the CPU. So, if you are considering CPU is a critical resource that requires proper scheduling in order to utilize the resources efficiently. So, process scheduling is nothing but assigning a process to the CPU whenever the CPU is free. So, switching between the processes will increase the efficiency of the operating system. So, in single programming environment, only one job will execute with the CPU, the other jobs will be waiting in the job queue. But in multi-programming environment, many jobs at a time will share the CPU for execution whenever the CPU is free. So, here the number of jobs, number of jobs will be executed with less time. But in single programming environment, only one job completely take over the CPU for the entire time. The waiting time of the jobs in the job queue will increase. Next, two important concepts with process scheduling is CPU burst and I.O. burst. CPU burst is nothing but the total time a process takes to complete its execution with the CPU. And I.O. burst is nothing but the total time process requires to be serviced by the I.O. devices. So this is CPU burst and I.O. burst. So during process execution, it consists of a cycle of executing with the CPU and then whenever it requires to be serviced by I.O. devices, it goes to I.O. wait state. Once it is serviced by the I.O. devices, again it comes to CPU execution state. So, the process execution consists of a cycle of CPU execution and I.O. wait. So, the process alternate between two states that is CPU burst and I.O. burst. Normally, the process begins with the CPU burst followed by I.O. burst and then followed by another CPU burst and then I.O. burst and so on. Initially, when the process is assigned with the CPU, that starts with the CPU burst. And whenever it is required to be serviced by the I.O. devices, it will go to the I.O. wait state and then it will complete its I.O. burst. Once it is ready, it will be assigned to the CPU and then it will go to the cycle of CPU burst. And then again, whenever an event occurs to be serviced by the I.O. devices, it will enter into the I.O. burst and so on. The final CPU burst ends with the process termination. That is, once the process completes its total execution, the final CPU burst ends with the process termination request. Next, CPU scheduler. Scheduler is nothing but scheduling or assigning a process to the CPU for execution. Whenever the CPU is ideal, the operating system will choose one of the job from the ready queue and that will be assigned to the CPU for execution. This selection process is done by a part of the operating system called the CPU scheduler. The CPU scheduler is otherwise called short term scheduler. To do the scheduling process, various scheduling algorithms are available. That is, first come, first served scheduling algorithm, shortest job first, priority scheduling, round robin scheduling. Likewise, various scheduling algorithms will help to schedule a job to the CPU. There are generally two categories of scheduling. One is preemptive scheduling and non-preemptive scheduling. Preemptive scheduling is nothing but when a job is executing with the CPU, 
due to some reason suspending this particular job without completing its execution and assigning any other job to the CPU. Non-preemptive scheduling is nothing but once a process is assigned to the CPU for execution, it will occupy or it will run with the CPU until it completes its total execution and enters into the termination state or it will switch to the waiting state for I.O. servers. This is called non-preemptive scheduling. So, preemptive scheduling is nothing but process without completion gets suspended. Non-preemptive scheduling is nothing but once process is assigned to the CPU till completion there is no suspension. CPU scheduling will take place under four conditions. That is when a process switches from the running state to the waiting state. Running state is nothing but the process executing with the CPU. That state is the running state. And waiting state is nothing but when, a, when an I.O. request is raised. That time a process will enter into the waiting state. So, when a process switches from the running state to the waiting state, it requires CPU scheduling. Second condition, when a process switches from the running state to the ready state. Ready state is nothing but during process execution, any interrupt occurs means the process will switch from the running state to ready state. Or during process execution, whenever I.O. service is required, that time a process will switch from ready state to the waiting state. And once the I.O. service is completed, it will switch from waiting state to the running state. So, when the process switches from running state to the ready state, CPU scheduling is required. Third condition, when a process switches from waiting state to ready state, the process will be waiting to be serviced for the I.O. devices. Once the request is satisfied, the process will enter into the ready state. So, that time scheduling is required. Fourth condition is, when process terminates, that is the process completes its total execution and leave the CPU permanently. So that time it will enter into the termination state. Actually speaking, the condition 1 and 4 is not actually scheduling. That is, in condition 1 and 4, if you are considering, a new process will be assigned to the CPU. When a process switch from the running state to the waiting state, at that time, a new process will be assigned to the CPU. Also, when a process terminates, that time also new process will be assigned to the CPU. So actually condition 1 and 4 is not actually scheduling. It is nothing but a new job assigned to the CPU for execution. Next important component of operating system is dispatcher. Dispatcher is the most important function of CPU scheduling function. The CPU scheduler will choose one of the job and that will be assigned to the CPU for execution. Once a process is assigned to the CPU for execution, this dispatcher is a module that gives the total control of the CPU functions to that particular process executing with the CPU. That is called dispatcher. The process will take control of the total CPU functions with the help of the dispatcher. The dispatcher functions include switching context. Switching is nothing but during process execution the CPU will switch from one process to another process during execution. That is called a switching. Switching context is nothing but whenever the CPU will switch from one process to the another process, it needs to save the state of the current process and needs to restore the state of the different process. That is called a switching context. So, to perform this switching context, dispatcher component is required. Whenever the process will switch to user mode, that is, if a process is executing any privileged instruction in system mode, and whenever the process completes its execution with the system mode, and when it wants to switch to the user mode, that time the dispatcher function is required. Jumping to the proper location in the user program to restart the program. So, whenever the user program requires to restart, in that time, dispatcher function is required. So, whenever the CPU switches between one process to the another process, the dispatcher help is required. So, the dispatcher should be as fast as possible. The time taken by the dispatcher to stop one ongoing process with the CPU and to start the another process to run with the CPU. That is the time taken by the dispatcher to stop one process and to start the another process that time gap is nothing but the dispatch latency. So in this session we have discussed the important concepts related to process scheduling. CPU burst, IO burst, CPU scheduler, preemptive scheduling, non-preemptive scheduling and dispatcher.
थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो